so you know we were using the cloud, which is always very fun and new age. Uh, we uh, we basically take it back any <coughs> server rents or anything. We're using Dropbox and everything else possible. This is the first time like I've ever done anything actually with JavaScript, so as well as the first time I've actually used an API. So that was useful to get that sort of experience because learning about programming and then learning about another API that someone else made is you know a completely different thing and there's always challenges trying to understand you know what their documentation says and what that something actually does and, you know while they might line up there's different interpretations and that was difficult for me to get as well as synchronization is, is lots of fun. I would just say web development in general as far as real-time web-based applications. I mean, I've designed websites in the past, but nothing involved in this for learning all the various APIs ever, basically. You know, aside from the Do you have any guidance, or you just just us? I own a web form and example, pretty much. And then, um... So let's go with the demo? Yep. So to explain some of the, the game mechanics of the game, uh, what will happen is uh, we'll, there's two types of cards. There's uh, black cards and white cards. Black cards are dealt out first and they give a prompt. And then one person will be a judge. And everyone else will have to choose a white card, which they think is the funniest one towards that prompt. And the, the judge will then say, oh, I like this one the most. And whoever the judge's card, white card they like the most gets the points. And wait that round. And then the, 
next round is a new judge, and you go on. <coughs> no, because it's supposed to be. Is this is an old game or invented. This is a, a in the actual physical card game, which is really has been released as a Creative Commons. Oh, what well, is it? Yeah, well, we can't we can reproduce it. We just can't crawl it off the page at all. Oh, you can't have it up there. Yeah, at all. They just put non-commercial. They say you can't have ads on the site if you're using our stuff. You start the game. Okay. So we'll start the game. We'll say um, two points required to win. Okay. All right. So Doctor Chef is the judge this round. So, so what's the new fad diet? You guys get to see my answer, so we'll, uh, I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think works out? Uh, waterboarding? Uh, I don't know. Maybe a passionate Latino lover? Um, uh, I think I'm going to go with an ice pick lobotomy. I think all of these were diets. And so I guess we'll submit it.
communicating where everybody's at and divvying up the workloads. Did you have codes? Uh, that was part of the delay that pushed us back initially because we, when we split the code, we didn't realize how much work it would be placing on Kylan to set up <coughs> the Amazon Web Services and get everything running with that. So we ran on the delays there where she didn't realize that she was behind and we weren't checking to see how she was doing, so we wound up falling behind that group. So we are communication improved in the second half of the project. We also had uh, one of our group members had a catastrophic laptop failure, so that does not have to happen. So we, we, we picked, we managed to get uh, most of our basic goals done before I guess I really had to cut out again because we didn't have time to. Uh, you guys all met uh, um, Ajit Ranabo, right? In the beginning of the class? I'm sorry? You met Ajit? Short web services. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, uh, he started working at Amazon Web Service uh, in the core Amazon Cloud Company group this week. Okay. Maybe you can clean their APY. And then uh, we'll do a short demo of some of the features of the game here. Resizing these boxes, but uh, so the game would continue like this until one player reached one, and at that point they'll print out who was the winner and bring everyone back to the login page. For in the interest of time, we'll do that one. Uh, 
that's fine. Let's go. So you can leave game here. And I just logged out, so come. And yeah, that was one of our things. Go ahead. Um, normally, it would just like remove his his box from the screen. I don't know why it had an error there. Um, so he clicked the leave game button. So if I were to um, just close yeah. the page. Okay, it's not displayed on screen, but it's now logged out on online. We have a JavaScript on unloaded in to call the logout thing. So that so way, anyway, in case anyone quits early, it doesn't mess up everybody else's okay. The 8 bit theme is pretty cool. Thank you. So, 
So, so what we really have for each we we have uh, an unstructured text and detecting resources as well as whether the tweet is asking for resource or not as or providing resource is basically being done by the parsers. Then we are annotating that parsed data so as we can create a rich knowledge base to answer the some of the important intelligent questions that we have discussed previously. So for this <coughs> presentations, we are basically using knowledge bases like one of the disaster ontology model, which was uh, okay. So I forgot to mention. So this was actually a part of the uh, already ongoing uh, SOPS project. So we have actually got the ontology model for annotating our data. We extended that model, and we are also using the Wikipedia knowledge base so as to identify different places uh, appearing in the tweet text, different organizations as they, they are appearing in tweet text, so as if we want to answer the questions like um, what are the organizations providing uh, help at what places, then we'll be able to do that. So having all those things, we are storing all that data into an RDF store and Finding way to get uh, results. Uh, yeah, that's it. And we are communicating through servlet between the back end and front end. <coughs> so, so uh, by far now it was uh, it was all good. We we did this part and we were communicating between front end and back end. But the the so so this was that whole architecture front end back end. But uh, there was a really big challenge that um, we have a really huge data set of tweets. So just as I mentioned that 5 million tweets just to start, at, that was the data for just 5 or 6 days. And for which, for which is also? Sent, hurricane sent. And we, we are annotating data, storing it into our RDF store. So the RDF store. And we are <coughs> after that we are mining knowledge from that database. So if we have our servlet firing query to the database directly, then what happens is every time we have to look through the annotated five million tweets, and for each tweet we have some seven to eight properties. So ultimately, what we have is five million into seven to eight data set to look for every time someone tries to see something over the user interface. So what we come up with, um, we just pick up on our database and our front end. So almost all the processing we do, we, we, we do the offline processing, we generate the files and data for the particular day by particular locations. And then we provide those files to servlet. So now servlet doesn't have to go to the database to get the data and can do the real <coughs> processing. So we'll show that uh, part in the demo that uh, it, it will be real quick even if it has the, the huge collection of that uh, weeks. So after, after doing all these things, what we were left with, uh, so, uh, with this kind of data. So I I I just mentioned. This is very interesting, but uh, we don't have time unfortunately. Okay. I must get out of here to So. All right. So um, I guess. So yeah. So point out the precise. What you want to say? I, uh, and I want. I'm really interested in. Uh, the the whole thing is the novelty of the problem. Yes. So I'm, I'm interested in how you got there. Um, you're a graduate student. I don't. You know. You don't. I'm not going to focus too much on the technology aspect. So I show me the research aspect of it. I want to understand what we learned for the technology. Aspect. Okay. That's what okay. So by research aspect, um, here we were able to detect what are the things being provided at <coughs> places. So if you if you see this database, this is the database for one particular class. That uh, for shelter. This are the this is the information which is really important to people. So, but 
the thing is, it's full of noise if you, if you see this particular data. So then, uh, then we did another processing that uh, over that particular database and come up with uh, really filtered out results. So this is a particular result what for... Is the, you see, what is the recall when you use? You must be using a lot of recall. Yes, so basically um, for one day, uh, this, this is the data for 29th day. And the recall for the particular shelter providers was uh, just this one. Uh, point is we had a lot of things, some of them were from the filtering. It's quite possible that there was something that was correct that I want to correct. The noise is almost in your thing. That means you have high precision. Yes. But that doesn't mean you have high call. There may be some useful data and you know content that you missed out because your filter was, you know. And and that information <coughs> well content analysis. Then there will be a lot of things that will be still useful but you don't have to Um so yeah. Um Actually, uh, frankly, I don't have the numbers that what number of weeks I did. So, but the thing is, what we are left with this, this is all our, all this information is being posted on the 29th day of that current during the Hurricane Sandy event. And um, it's providing really rich and important information. So yeah, this is these are some of the stats regarding noise analysis. So I guess it's, it, it's all there. So from my perspective, what I learned was when I started, I didn't know the unstructured text processing, social data analysis using plan, uh, text parser. So I have used seven to eight parsers. I have also come up with my own parser. And the important thing was I have I have not used the. <coughs> semantic databases to mining out the uh, knowledge before this, before I started on this project. So it was a really good exposure to these things and the uh, most important aspect was the research wise that uh, how social network can help in different <coughs> scenarios. So, yeah. so that's what I'm doing. Alright, uh, so for mine, I mostly just work with the front end stuff. Um, this is just kind of a, an overlay of what I did as far as uh, the communication for uh, the two the two widgets that I, that I helped to uh, perform into a different thing. Uh, pretty much uh, using PHP scripts uh, on the graph flow, and up all the pins, and then when you push that pin, it will retrieve data based on based on that uh, graph flow. Um, for the networks, um, what it was retrieving um, specific data from uh, apps that I had stored already for uh, each one of the networks, and I'll kind of show you more I'll go here in a second. Okay, uh, just kind of a review of the APIs I used. Um, mostly jQuery, that helped out a lot, especially with the stylistic things. Uh, Google Maps was, you know, for the map and that. Uh, D3, I used that to um, create the network graphs. Um, Twitter API, uh, which I'll show, allows functionality with users to interact directly with what is the future API mean? Uh, it allows. Uh, what it did. Okay, what it did was it allowed for.